How's it going everyone? Hope everybody's been enjoying Starfield. Today this video is going to be going over how to get the basics for your outpost started, getting you ready for decorating and much more. First off, what you're going to want to do of course is pick a location. On your adventures you might come across some planets, some moons that you notice to have a good amount of resources. I definitely suggest looking for a planet that has a few resources that you're able to take advantage of. You're probably going to make a few outposts once you start getting the hang of it, uh, starting to make specific locations, extract certain resources, and then you're going to be sending those resources to other locations. Uh, as you see here, I'm taking a look at the resources of this planet over here and trying to plan out exactly what I'm going to do. The location itself for me, I wanted a flat area. I do like the map in the game. It kind of shows you the topography. You see over here, this location is kind of flat compared to the hilly areas nearby. And again, once you're happy with a spot, that's when the fun begins and actually placing your first outpost. Uh, so for me, again, pretty happy with this location in front of me. But before we even get to placing the outpost or doing any of that, what I'm going to recommend is going to Jemison, going to New Atlantis, and going to the Commercial District to start stocking up on resources. On your way to the UC Distribution Center, yes. uh, you're going to want to keep course. in mind there are certain resources that you want to collect. A lot of the resources sold here are going to be utilized in outpost building and a lot of different mods, research. There's a lot that it actually can be used for. Um, I'm going to put some sort of list of resources to the side for people to at least get them started so you know roughly what you need. If you are able to start stocking up on these resources, I would say maybe anywhere from three, 4000 on more of an expensive end, maybe 2000 if you buy exactly what you're looking for, uh, but at least get you started. And across the street from the UC Distribution Center is Outland. Once you're inside... This yeah, isn't as much for so resources, but this is more so for purchasing components. One of the main ones is the adaptive frame. So as soon as you see these, definitely scoop them up, whether it's here or other locations. You're going to need a lot of those over time. And then there's some other things that you're going to need, some more advanced components down the road. But keep that in the back of your mind. So now, coming back to the location, one of the things that I suggest people do is take advantage of the the photo mode using the camera utilizing the field of view zooming all the way out because when you're in first person even in third person you don't get a really good grasp of the location in front of you at least with the photo mode you're able to get kind of a better look at a larger area before you even start placing anything and when you do start placing your own base I'm gonna make a suggestion make a save go to place your base if it's not where you want start again and that's exactly what you're going to see here. We're going to call this attempt number one. I understand when I place my outpost, it shows that only nickel is directly in front of me. But then if I move the outpost a little bit further, I see that I can also extract platinum. So for this specific outpost, my focus is extracting nickel, platinum, uh, utilizing those resources. In the beginning, I'm probably just going to sell them uh, before I even turn them into components. A lot of these resources, again, are utilized throughout the game, whether they're in the raw forms for different research components, mod components, or actually turning the resources into uh, more advanced components. And now that I have a spot chosen, I'm able to look at the overall radius. I'm pretty happy with the location, uh, but I do need to make sure that everything makes sense that the extractors that I'm trying to utilize have enough room to be placed. The issue with this one is the platinum deposits are only starting to just come into the radius. So if I want to get the most out of at least that resource, I should move, let's say, the outpost a little bit more forward. When I compare it to, uh, as well, the nickel extractor, what that's going to look like, it's not as bad. So in terms of trying to get the most resources for two different resources, I'm basically going to reload the save here, try to move this up a little bit more, 
and you might have to do this a couple times depending on the area you choose. This area is very flat so it's kind of easier to just see exactly how much further you have to move. I've experimented with more hilly areas and it definitely gets a little bit more involved. But like I mentioned, once you place your outpost you're going to have to reload a save and then place it again by picking up the outpost and moving it even to the furthest extent. That doesn't actually move the radius so you're going to have to try again. Alright, so we will call this attempt number two. It could be just as simple as here, just pick it up, place it so many more, let's say, feet in front of where you last placed it. Double check again, take out your extractors, and see if it's that much better. Again, if you're also looking for topography to be a designing factor for your what, like where you place stuff, what your building's going to look like, and all that stuff, uh, be mindful of that, but trying to make sure that the resource extractors uh, can be placed, can be utilized, is very important, especially that you can't place them directly on top of each other. So you do need to leave a little bit of room. And then one last time, we'll call this attempt number three. I'm just going to move this over just a little bit more, and I guess third time's the charm. As I do place this last outpost spot, double checking the resources that they can be placed. There's enough room for both of them, the nickel, the platinum extractors. And then at the same time trying to plan exactly where I'm gonna have my own outpost, the structure itself. So I understand this works for my needs. I can have the resources on the outer edges. I can kind of build within the center and on the opposite end. So once you have a pretty good idea of where you're placing your extractors, things like that, I would highly suggest looking ahead to what else you can build. Don't necessarily rush them all, but I feel like over time people are just about going to make every single thing on the list just to see what it does. Uh, the good news is once you place something too, you can place it, hold X over it to delete it, and that gives you the resources back. So if you want to see how something looks before it's permanent, there's really no penalty here. It's not like you're getting half the resources back or anything else like that. Um, I, as I am going through the different categories, for this specific spot, I'm going to be placing the structure. I'm going to have to place the outpost here, at least the airlock for it, soon, just to see what that looks like. But as I am looking at all these different resources, for me, I've been playing the game for a bit. I've been putting a bunch of random resources to the side. And those resources being put to the side made it a lot easier for me to at least start placing something, even if it's just like put a couple of storage boxes down to call that my little treasure chest of loot, and then keep coming back in between adventures. Uh, once you do start placing the different extractors, the different categories, there's a good amount to the outpost building. Uh, there is a skill dedicated to unlocking even more stuff. That's going to be in a separate video. But between the displays, the miscellaneous, uh, and a few other things, you'll actually notice those categories uh, do wind up getting more items. I want to say it's displays, and then like the mannequins and all that other stuff, you'll see that there's even different poses, there's different display cases, there's different, um, let's say, decor that you get for your base, but I'll cover that in a different video. In terms of this, Planning all these resources, if you want to have a pretty decent sized base, you'll have to save up. Especially the more, let's say, square footage you want to take up in that large radius. For this video, for today's purposes, I had actually put aside the resources needed to exactly make certain things. So between the chest in front of me, I actually have the resources to make specifically let's say the amount of solar rays that I wanted, the certain amount of storage. I even planned ahead for the uh, hydroponic uh, habitat B and a few other things. Putting all those resources aside is a very good way to then expand, let's say your conquering of the universe because as soon as you start placing one base, you're gonna wanna place even more. So all these resources in front of me are exactly what I need to place not just this base, but the next one. And then before, 
I go any further into that. Once you do have a base of operations, it's much easier because then you create these cargo links, and then these cargo links can be uh, linked exactly to other bases. Uh, this is the one that is for within the system teleportation of goods and you can go in specifically and link them up, send stuff back and forth. There's a little terminal once you have a location set up. You can see what resources are going in as well as going out. Once you do have your first base and you have access to this, it does make it a lot easier because then you could theoretically just set up a cargo link on the new location, go back to the original base, and send everything to the new one. But for now, if this is your first base and you're just placing things, for the very first time, you don't have that luxury, so again, you have to start planning ahead. And before you can even start extracting anything, you do need to place your power. I had planned ahead so I could place three solar arrays. Each of these solar arrays are giving four power. After three of them, I'll have 12, which will be just enough uh, for my two extractors. Each of those extractors are going to need five each. So I'm going to have a little excess power, but not enough to utilize for anything else. And then after I am placing my source of power for the start of our operations, I am going to place storage. I'm going to start off, if I only had the resources for a few things, I would try to prioritize the solid storage and the warehouse small storage then place the liquid and gas as you can. I feel like after you get your first four, start adding more solid storages. Once you have this placed, we are on to the next step. We are going to actually place the extractor. Like I mentioned before, when you're planning ahead, before you even get to this part, you should already know roughly where you're placing things. Uh, considering when you first move into a location, you wanna make sure that you can actually build it at that spot without any issues. For this location I have platinum and nickel and then for what I'm going to be able to extract it's going to be pretty good. And then after I've placed both of those extractors I'm moving on to the actual outpost airlock. Something to keep in mind is when you place these locations or place these airlocks or any of your individual modules you want to be mindful that sometimes the rocks, even though they're supposed to disappear, they can grow back. So if you're not feeling confident that they're going to stay away forever, you might want to raise them up a little bit. But once you've placed exactly the airlock, whatever other module next you want, I'm personally a fan of this one, you're then able to move into placing all the crafting stations. I think this is a pretty good priority. Uh, pretty early on, I would say you're exposed to a few different workshops, uh, not just in the ships that you're able to fly, but some of the locations. As soon as you go there, there's different, let's say, workstations. Definitely take advantage of it as you can. Um, I have exactly enough resources to place at least one of every single crafting station in here. Uh, and this is exactly how I'm setting up my base. Once I have a location set up, I'm trying to grab exactly the resources that I need, move to the next location. If I need, let's say, a crafting station like this placed, I'll place it. If that location is only for resources, then I'm not going to even bother placing something like this. I'll just operate out of my own personal ship that has these things already on it, um, or one of my other outposts. But if this is your first, let's say, outpost you're placing, you're going to want to set up these as soon as you can, as they all are very useful throughout the game. And now that you do have your different stations set up, we'll take a quick preview at one of the stations that is very important as we continue to talk about extracting resources. But if you've placed at least this much, you're on your way to expanding and growing your outpost and going into very advanced building. More on the advanced building later on. There's different components and things that you're able to make. We do have the industrial workbench over here. If you're looking at the top right, you see that there's resources, aluminum, iron, making adaptive frames. It's a very common thing that you're making throughout the game. 
There's a lot of other components that you'll be making with certain resources. Depending on the planet you land on, you may be able to make almost an entire component, half of a component, so you're going to make multiple locations to extract resources to make this, and all these components are going to be used mid, end game, early game, all that. And now going back to placing and creating output links with extractors, going back to exactly where you're placing things it does matter. There is a radius. Uh, for this portion of the video, I'm only placing one of each, and then I'm linking them so you have an idea of exactly where these resources are going. These extractors create enough resources until they're full and then they'll stop producing. So what you're going to want to do is create an output link to, let's say, somewhere for these resources to go and then once that gets full, so on and so forth, it'll stop producing. But in terms of this extractor that I'm running up towards right now, um, very quickly it'll start producing resources. It is active as soon as it is placed. But as you notice, as I go up to it, uh, there's going to be a limit that these things can hold. They can't hold a whole lot, so it is worth trying to, as soon as you place it, have another location for the resources to go out to. I already have a couple of resources in this. And if you go into the build menu, you're able to then link it to some other location, and it'll send the resources directly to that storage container or whatever. If the storage container fills up, it then goes back to the original extractor until the original extractor fills up. So right here you're just seeing a very simple link between the resource extractor and this solid storage crate. I am then trying to link in reverse the output container to the storage crate and as you could see it was giving me an error. It's a one way street. You have to look at how these resources are flowing, so you're creating exactly where you want something to go to and where you want it to go from, not the other way around, so keep that in mind. So now that you have your workbench and all this, your workstation placed, on to the next thing that makes sense, placing a bed, placing some storage, before you get to adding your own flare, moving things around, and making this your forever home. Uh, of course if you are utilizing your ship for a lot of different things you're probably sleeping there or even resting up at different locations you're adventuring to but I think right away if you're able to place a bed to sleep in and some storage containers it's very useful the storage containers the larger ones do carry up to 150 uh, weight so between two of those you're able to stash 300 that's pretty good and depending on the location you go to when you're resting up, be mindful of the time dilation. Because then when you're resting for one hour, it might be two hours, it might be 20 hours. Now going back to linking resources, as I was explaining, you have to look at the resources in the direction they're flowing. Uh, what we're going to do is now have resources going back and forth not just from an extractor to a storage container, but actually from one outpost to another. Uh, you will need to place a cargo link, assuming that you're starting off your first two bases or outposts within this uh, same system. You're going to be placing the normal cargo link, not the inter-system cargo link. If you want to go into a different system, then that's going to have a little bit more upkeep. But as soon as you're able to place this cargo link, you can then even send resources directly from the extractors to the cargo link, then tell the cargo link where you want to send it, and effectively can just send resources directly to wherever you want. And that's very useful. I do hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far. There's still a little bit more to go, some previews about my other outposts and other things we got planned and goodies. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, definitely subscribe and keep an eye out for more content after the video. So now we're here looking at how I'm going to exactly get all these resources. I'm looking at the links. You can see there's a few different extractors. 
by this point in the video I've placed a few more extractors and I have one specifically going from each of them to a different outpost. And when you're looking at the cargo link up close you'll see that there is a container for outgoing, there is a container for incoming. So I have platinum and nickel going out to my other location. And then if I was going to send anything else over here it would just be in the opposite side. But for the console, this is exactly where you would set all that up. You would go and link both of them after you have two different cargo links placed. Now this is the second outpost I'm making for this video. It was much quicker to make the second one around and I imagine a lot of other people will feel the same way. Once you actually start placing these, it becomes a little bit more like second nature. You know more so what to prioritize. Uh, you know what more like resources they're going to be using. Uh, the way I look at it, basically, you're going to want to place three solar arrays so you can afford the upkeep for two different extractors. If you want to place even more extractors, just keep multiplying that. If you're able to calculate all the resources ahead of time, it's definitely useful. Put all that, let's say, onto your ship and then fly to whatever location and then you're able to extend your resources, your conquering of the cosmos, if you will. Uh, right now, as I'm placing a helium extractor, uh, first off, it does cost different resources from the aluminum and the other, re uh, let's say, resource extractors. But right now, you're looking at the radius that I'm placing this. As an example, I'm placing that directly in the center. If I place it in the center, I'm able to place another one of those helium extractors within that radius. But if I place it too close to one side or the other, it'll overlap and you wouldn't be able to place too many so keep that in the back of your mind and again once you have your power running for your base you have your extractor set up it is then time for you to consider how you're going to set up your modules your different interior pieces but you can't do that without placing your outpost airlock and then when you're placing your outpost airlock just make sure that you're clipping everything through the ground in a way that makes sense and your companions don't get stuck on the railings coming up and then pick the habitat for you. As a quick look of what I got going on here again I was able to have the resources aside kinda ship it over here just get a very simple start and once I have my habitat started my outpost and the interior we're going right back outside and figuring out exactly how we can connect all the resources uh, for this specific location, I now have three different extractors and if you take a quick look at how this is set up, you can see it's very simple. You can connect these different uh, extractors to storage containers. You can connect storage containers to other storage containers and then it'll just keep sending the resources down the line. For this specific example, I'm looking at how aluminum is going to be extracted three different extractors going into one container when I go up to the container I'm able to look at how quickly it's producing aluminum uh, right away it was able to just send everything that it produced and some so it filled up right away uh, just a quick example of how you can get resources too once you have these extractors set up and they're running on their own once you know your storage container container has dropped down to zero percent Put a bed next to it. Sleep for an hour, depending on time dilation, you might have different results. But if you're able to look inside that storage container, you see exactly 21 aluminum. If I sleep for two hours instead of one hour, when I wake up, I look back inside the storage container and I'm able to see that there's even more. So if you keep doing this over and over and over again until you find that sweet spot of how quickly you can fill something up, you technically can take these resources and go and sell them and reinvest them into more resources. But again, you have to work with finding that sweet spot, how easy it is to get those resources and exactly what resources you'll be collecting. All right, so we have a pretty good idea of all this. Um, I do want to give a preview of what this second outpost looked like after I spent a little bit more time on it. I placed more modules. They're empty right now, but just to get the idea, I have two different extractors, aluminum and helium, at this location. The other location was nickel and platinum. Um, I also placed a few other things that you'll see in the background, but 
there's a lot of creativity that you can put into at least not just the placement but the progression through the spaces the things that you use to then display from your adventures and then as you're seeing the cargo ship lift off it's going to ship some resources to one of my other bases and I like the way this works again you're thinking of resources going from one location to the next and the scale just continues to grow and grow and this is actually my current outpost I've been functioning out of this one for a while now basically since I started the game um, this was not my exact first location that I landed on but in terms of treating this like a treasure trove I put all my random miscellaneous stuff some spare weapons gear things I've displayed I will make a separate video giving a tour of this whole location but for those that are learning how to make outposts you're gonna wanna basically make one of everything see what each of them does uh, and then after a while you just keep upping the scale of what you're doing and again another preview of what I've been working with I feel like you don't need a ton of modules probably the smaller amount the better but you'll start off small you'll keep expanding you go out explore come back build a little bit more use up those resources repeat but I do hope you guys have enjoyed hope this has been informative I've been having fun expanding my own locations uh, there's still a lot that I'm learning uh, there is points that you can put into the let's say outpost skill which I'll cover down the road I don't think it's really worth rushing into that skill I'll mention that now but I think maybe one point is pretty good to put into that one uh, again I do hope you guys enjoyed all this found it informative I will be doing more content like this so definitely give me some feedback swing by the twitch stream and let's get into some more Starfield conversations together <laughs>